The first mm-hmm. month. Yeah. Were there times that you had to, you know, I, I, without getting real heavy, were there mm-hmm. times that you had to bring up some sure. times? I'm, I'm sure with Robin, oh, yeah, sure. I'm sure there were a lot of yeah. times that, that brought back some really tough memories. Yeah, and, you know, I brought up some, you know, growing up and how I even got into this game in the first place was by mistake. I should be driving race cars. Okay, well, I got run over and somebody gave me a guitar and I learned how to play. Okay, well, before that, when I was a kid, I didn't know my dad OD'd. I didn't know quite a lot of things until I was older. So we touch, I touch on some personal shit, you know, and maybe give, give some people a little insight. They can look around and say, oh, shit, this is going down now, you know, in my place, you know. So, you know, I touched on some stuff, you know, personal, but... Uh, you know, that's some pretty good pictures. That's some pretty good pictures in here, man. You mentioned the whole mm. idea of this show. The show is called Fork in the Road, and the reason, the way that Grant and I came up with it was that we've kind of reached this fork in our road. You know, mm. we, we both have gotten divorced. We're both going in different directions, mm. and what I found is this is this is what happened personally for me, and I want to know if it's the same way as you, mm-hmm. guys like us. We never really had a midlife crisis because we never grew up. In our heads, we're still living that 20-year-old life. Sure. And now we're 40s, 50s, mm-hmm. and we're still meant to, like, I don't feel like I'm old. I know I don't look like I'm, but I'm mm. old, and I'm older, You're older, and I don't feel like that. Well, I don't you know? either. I, I'm, I, and to be in this business, I, you have to have a youth quality that you're still indestructible. You can still jump off bridges, and you can still you know, scream like a banshee or do whatever to do what we do, you know, whether you're in front of it or behind it or on stage or whatever, that's what we do. It's rock and roll. Rock and roll is ageless, timeless, you know, and that's why I still do it. I mean, believe me, I've told my band and my solo guys, if I, if you ever see me just walk off stage, you'll know I've had enough. You know, but I haven't gotten there yet. I still get that two seconds of euphoria, which keeps me out there. And Rat is yeah. touring right now, or just yeah. about to go back out on tour. Yeah, we're out there. We're we're being. We're Any shows that I'll be allowed in? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think you should. Have I'm just going to give you an all access yearly laminate, Good and you'll God. be fine. Say, look, I'm in. But no, we just did a GNR show, uh, some festival. We're getting ready to do a show with Van Halen, our first ever. They're only a North American uh, show. Um, We've got some good stuff coming up. So as far as I'm concerned, as long as we just take it a little easy, then it'll be okay. You know, work smart, smart, not hard. You Have know? you seen Van Halen lately? Um, only some YouTube stuff. Maybe I should. He's, he's yeah. going out on tour with them, so yeah. I want everything. Well, we're doing to be one show. We're doing one show, and now you know. I, I mean, there's great history with with me and and those guys. I mean, you know, when I first met them a friend of mine kept trying to tell me you know in like 1977 you got to see this band van halen they play zeppelin just like zeppelin they're playing gazaris i'm like all right i'm in you know i just moved to san diego as a kid so i never made it he's going one time he goes okay did you see him no well they're playing the whiskey i go i'm going so me i get in my Dots and B210 fly up this L.A. And I know the backstage routine because I know some girls in L- uh, San Diego who used to, like, you know, do the backstage, Aerosmith, and I'd go to all these shows in San Diego. I mean, I've seen Zeppelin three times, you know, fortunate. But uh, so anyway, I'm driving up that one street Motley used to live on right there near the Whiskey. Uh, I forget the name of the street. Uh, Sunset and whatever. Anyway, I'm driving up there, and I see Dave walking up the stairs and I just yell out hey Dave you want to smoke a joint and like I would do you go well yeah of <laughs> course come on up and he invited me up smoked a joint and I went where's Ed because <laughs> I was into guitars and amps and shit you know even though I was singing and sure enough that was it he kind of blew me off in a nice way and I got to meet Ed and became kind of friends and traded gear and equipment and it was a beautiful thing it was it was more like kind of family, like a lot of bands intertwined yeah. with each other. Mm. Now I think it just sucks. I mean, people used yeah. to go to live shows, yeah. and I hate like sounding like such a relic. But mm-hmm. people used to go to live <laughs> shows <laughs> just to see live shows. If hey, who's yeah. playing at the whiskey? I don't know. Let's go. Yeah, sure. You know, it was it was really cool. Yeah, and you know, it, it, like you said earlier, it's like a lot of our the early Sunset Strip rock, whatever you want to call it, eighty one to uh, or three or even four to five 
can never be repeated because it, you know when people ask me how was that like back then I go well you ever seen that Doors movie when there's just cars and people and fucking and boozing and partying well that's what what it was it, that couldn't happen nowadays to save anybody's life you know everybody's in competition everybody's this everybody's that you know back then it was it was we hung out I mean Motley and Rats you know we met when we met each other you know we just nobody had any money you know we'd go to the rainbow and leech off chicks to get drunk and fed you know and we decided here we're going to call ourselves the gladiators you know <laughs> and we gave each other nicknames and we became the street thing you know and hung out and it was bad it was the coolest thing you know and uh those days well over and well over. never happen again you know you also like myself have a real love for motorsports, but you're yes. more of a drag racing guy. Yes. Yeah, um, because I was a pit crew guy when I was a teenager. Music was the furthest thing from my mind. I mean, I knew about bands, Alice Cooper and whatever. And I mean, I thought Alice Cooper was a chick. When my, <laughs> one of my friends first introduced me to him, I'm like, who's that chick? She's ugly, you know? <laughs> He's like, no, but I was into race cars. I mean, I would be at Lyons, Orange County, Irwindale. I mean, nice. I was just every weekend, I'd be pouring the bleach and just, mm, just, it was the most brilliant thing. And I wanted to be one of the youngest drivers, you know, at 15, 16. Didn't happen. You know? Yeah, you said you got run over. Yeah, I moved to San Diego and, you know, hanging out with some hippie kids. But I, you know, left this one so-called friends pad and got run over and next thing i know they're like your legs are irreparable you will not be driving race cars wow, and we're all we're, we're all friends with ron caps and yeah and ronnie the, yeah that's a cool oh dude. i love it i i gotta tell you and racing now but you know i sponsor race cars we do huge deals we have for years using cross marketing with rat or top fuel records james day uh uh, Clay Milliken, uh, you know, uh, several people, Walt Rhodes, who got me into this game in the first place. Um, um, but uh, uh, Jeff Deal, I mean, a lot of people have, you know, been very cool. I mean, Tony Schumacher, I remember going up to his dad, you know, when Tony was first driving fuel cars, going, hey, can I throw a rat sticker up there? He's like, yeah, go ahead, put it on the nice. car. I want to do stuff like, like that. Nice, you know. The book is called Sex, Drugs, Rat, and Roll, My Life in Rock, a memoir by Stephen Piercy, and you can find it probably at every bookstore. Yeah. No. Rat is going on tour, and you mm. are also getting into being a social media whore. Not like myself. You're like mm. a social... You're just kind, you want well, it. Well, yeah, I, I create shows and, and stuff to where I want you to actually... Be, do <laughs> I'll do whatever you want, Steven. You're my boy. Anything I want you, you to want. host one of my shows. Whatever. But we still do. But it, racing and, you know, I'll go, we're doing some shows, but it's like nowadays I would rather just do less is more. You know, I mean, I have my solo band, great guys. I, I like doing my own music. I love doing rap music, you know. So it's we're still here kicking, so why not? You know? Website? Uh, steven com or theratpack.com. And I have his Twitter accounts, and I'll put all that stuff all over my Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being Thank here. You, you are, I appreciate you are it. Yeah, man. first guest, and it's it's cool because I you're it. also a friend. I dig but it. But it's also, there's so much cool rock and roll history, and that's mm -hmm. why I didn't do it the first show, because I don't want everybody to think, oh, he's doing the Headbangers Ball again, but I had to bring you in, especially because I didn't get to go see the and show that's at the Freaking Canyon you, Club. I know, well. well Justin. Next Justin. one, but i got to tell you, you, you were talking about your show. That's amazing. You never got a send-off show. Never did a final head. That's not right, that is weird, man. Yeah. Because that was a huge show. It was the dude. biggest. It, it was, was the insane. Biggest. It was insane. We're gonna play a couple. We're gonna play a little bit of something from Rat as Stephen leaves, and then we're gonna come back with a kind of indication of what else this show is. So stay tuned. There's a lot more fork in the road. Here's something from Rat. You strip a June is a great month because just before June we had Memorial Day, which is of course is a very important holiday, and June has got a lot of great Americana holidays as well. For instance, it's Waylon Jennings' birthday, which happens to be the same day as mine. National Running Day. I go out for National Running Day and I'll run. And another holiday that's pretty important to me is National Donut Day. I don't know how many of you know this, but the donut was invented by Americans. 
No big shocker, I really like donuts. Most Americans like donuts. As a matter of fact, if you don't like donuts, you're probably not American or maybe you just take good care of your body. Like I said, donuts were purely American, but the Dutch were making these fried dough balls before that, but they tasted like crap. Then in 1847, Captain Hanson Crockett Gregory punched a hole in the center of a dough ball, which made the center of the cakes cook better. William Rosenberg, who was a food franchising pioneer, founded the Dunkin' Donuts chain. Rosenberg opened his first coffee and donut shop called The Open Kettle in Quincy, Massachusetts in 1948. The name was changed to Dunkin' Donuts in 1950. Now the army may not have invented the first donut, but it certainly is responsible for making donuts as popular as they are today. The first week of June in 1938, the Salvation Army started Donut Day in Chicago, which honored the work of the women that worked World War I for the Salvation Army. And what those ladies did is they prepared donuts for thousands of soldiers that worked in the war. So, are donuts good for you, even though an apple fritter has apples in it? Well, no, because it's deep fried and fat and blah, 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 blah. Who cares? I'm waiting in line with everybody else at Randy's Donuts. Randy's Donuts has been in Los Angeles since 1953. It's in Inglewood. You've seen it all over the place. It's open 24 hours on the corner of La Cienega and Manchester. An apple fritter, a buttermilk, and two maple. a big fan of the apple fritter. You know, Randy's Donuts, good apple fritter. That, that thing right there, which is like three stories high, has been in a whole bunch of movies. Um, I can think Iron Man 2, you might remember Tony Stark sat in that donut and ate a donut. And I kind of like this because when you come to Los Angeles, it's right by LAX. That's one of the first things you see. And in a time when Americana architecture isn't like it used to be in the 50s you used to have like big huge things like a big hot dog for pink's hot dogs you used to have like big giant guy holding a tire and those are all gone by like stupid just straight signs that are just boring and now we've still got big donut at randy's donuts reminiscent of the 50s when the place opened up so i guess let's try the donuts the first one is that which is the buttermilk <laughs> Tastes good, really thick. Good buttermilk until now. Next, we're trying the maple. Actually, the maple is a really good maple donut. Um, let's be honest, there really is no such thing as a bad donut. Somebody said that donuts are like sex. Even when it's bad, it's Actually, no, it's nothing like it's nothing like that. Well, of course, a lot of people are fans of the Krispy Kreme donut. As a matter of fact, I was such a fan of them. I started a skateboard company called Pool School, and I was told to stop using their logo because I guess it looked a little bit like Krispy Kremes, but personally, I don't see it at all. Well, for the sake of this show, I bought the three donuts, and then I ate all three donuts. And you know what? I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> if any of you guys have any really cool ideas of some place that you want us to eat or try something, send it to The Fork Show on Twitter. Just follow us on The Fork Show on Twitter and tweet some places that you want us to go to and we'll try to go it on upcoming episodes of Fork in the Road. Those were really good. So yeah, listen, good. if you want, if you have any ideas of places that we go, I don't know what is going to be in next week's show. I'm kind of, we're kind of making this as we go, and we really want your feedback. So on Twitter, we're at The Fork Show. Our website is theforkshow.com, and you can send us any ideas or anything like that, and uh, we would like your feedback. Man, this goes quick. It does go quick. That's a quick. Hey, remember the donut shop where it says, uh, uh, don't get a divorce, get a donut? I did get a donut. And a <laughs> remember that? Where is that? It's in Burbank. It's here in Burbank, isn't it? Everybody, thank you very much for watching episode two of The Fork, Sh Fork in the Road. Uh, we got to figure out what we're really called. Wait a minute. What show are we doing? I'm not sure if it's called The Fork Show or Fork in the Road. I just want a donut. I really want a donut. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll be back next week. And on next week's show, no freaking clue. Yep. Deuces. I'm Ricky Rackman. I'm Grant Reynolds. We don't have a catchphrase to end the show. <laughs> Later. Bye.